So, so we all go through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then you graduate from that. Say, hey, you graduate high school. And then you go into That's right. That's right. You don't have to worry about now going to college. Right. Well, you know, there's one guy um, in our ward. And I, he's from Dominica originally. He's thinking, do I, do I go to college? Straight off? You know what I mean? Do I go to college? Am I going to go to a mission? We're all like, I'm like, do you um, Whereas, like, girls, if they decide to, they can, but they don't. <laughs> There's not even like a little bit of pressure on them to do one of the, one of the five rhythms that all the rest are doing. But my sister is like, Good evening and welcome to the Board of Commissioners Extraordinary Session. It is 15 April at 6 p.m. This time I'd like to request everybody please silence your cell phones and all other electronic devices. I'd like to ask Commissioner James Dutton, District 2, to deliver the invocation and Commissioner Ryan Bolden from District 4 to lead us in the Pledge of the Flag. Please stand and join me in prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Father, we're so grateful to come together tonight as citizens of Spalding County. Father, be with us tonight as we act and take the actions that are required of us as elected officials. Father, uh, be with all those that are in harm's way tonight, law enforcement, first responders, our military personnel, and otherwise. Father, keep them safe, wrap them in your arms, and Ensure that they can return home to their families tonight. Father, be with our families while we're all away from them, that they too will be protected and have that spirit of discernment to know thy will in their lives. Father, bring that same spirit here that we can know thy will here in Spalding County, that we can be better servants of thee, and that through our example, we can help lead others to have the relationship that we have with thee, that we can, uh, when our work here on this life is over, return and live with thee through the redemption power of thy Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it is in his name, the name of Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would, please join me and pledge allegiance to our flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, at this time, I'd like to amend the agenda to add an item for pay. Our staff worked with Evergreen, a consultant firm who completed our pay study. We heard that their brief, we heard their briefing at our last BOC meeting. The recommendation was to move forward with a hybrid approach to increase the starting pay and adjust pay for, to alleviate compensation. The total cost is $3.2 million for all departments with $1.8 million in our general fund to take care of our deputy sheriffs and 911 operators. The county manager has approximately 90 positions that have been unfilled this year leaving approximately $3.5 million available for this pay increase. I would recommend we move forward with this increase. Could I have a motion to, improve, uh, to move forward with the pay increase for our employees? Uh, motion to amend the agenda to make that the new number one under new business. I want to, uh, could we make that the number two under presentations and financial statements? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll amend my motion to make it number two under uh, presentation of financial statements. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Why are, why are we not just going to do it on the regular business? It's, it's not a presentation. We, we could. It could go under. It, it could is, go there. I just wanted one to get it done business. right off to be able to do this. It is new business, Mr. Chairman. It, so it would really be number should. one under new business. Okay. Right. Back okay. to your under. I rescind my amendment and go back to number one in new business. <laughs> and, I, and I second his All right, motion I have a motion a and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hands. Four, zero. Motion to, uh, to amend the agenda is passed. Uh, item number four, presentation of financial statement. Presentation of financial statement for the month ending March 31st, 2024. Ms. Dye. Good evening. Good evening, hey, Erica. Erica. 
As of March 31st, nine months have passed in the present fiscal year, which accounts for 75% of the budget. The general fund revenues are 62.8 million, which attributes to 94%. General fund expenditures and encumbrances total 45.2 million, which accounts for 64% of the budget. As you can see on the slide, the fire district revenues are at 9.5 million, which accounts for 74% of the fire district budget. Also, the fire district expenditures and encumbrances total 12.1 million, which is 60, I mean, excuse me, 46% of budget. As of March 31st, revenues have increased by 3% compared to the previous month, while expenditures have risen by 6%. These figures imply that the budget has been allocated and utilized as intended. The summary of revenue sources as of March 31st, the county has collected $46.7 million in taxes, which accounted for 74.4% of the total taxes received. These taxes included $32.3 million in real property tax, current and previous year, interest and penalty on real and personal property, public utility tax, motor vehicle tax, ad valorem tax and title fees for personal property, also local option sales tax. Intergovernmental revenues totaled 8.8 .8 million, comprising of 14.1% of total reported revenue. These revenues are from local, state, and federal sources, including the real estate transfer tax, Georgia Highway Safety Grants, VOCA Grants, Accountability Court Grants, Boost, and CSBG reimbursements. I wanted to note that to date, FEMA has reimbursed Spalding County a total amount of $7.2 million for the January 2023 tornado. Erica, what was our total expenditure for, for that, the tornado expenses? I believe it was uh, $8.2 million. Yes, ma'am, we're at We've 87% collect collected. Correct. At the 87% 87, 87 between both FEMA and GEMA. That's correct. We still have um, approximately $430,000 that are outstanding that uh, we got word today was being processed and moved forward, so we'll have more funds coming in over the next few months. Awesome. Great news. For charges for services in March, the county has collected 3.5 million or 5.6%. Miscellaneous revenue collected for March is 1.59 million or 2.5%, which includes income from resource officers, both the CI and Sheriff's Department for inmate phone commissions and store commissions. Fines and forfeitures generated 1.4 million or 2.2% of the total revenue for court fines. The general fund expenditures and encumbrances include 59% or 26.6 million for employee salaries, benefits, and taxes. Purchases and contractor services like radio and computer equipment, software and office equipment, travel, dues and subscription, education, election expenses, telephone, postage and auto and truck maintenance account for 32.1% or 14.5 million of the total expenditures. Supplies, which include office and departmental, utilities, uniforms, fuel, and small equipment, account for 9.2% or 4. million, 4.2 million of the total expenditures. Also, debt service, which includes the enterprise vehicles, principal and interest, the airport authority bond, principal and interest, and other capital lease principal and interest on equipment accounts for 2.1% or 943,000. To close, a snapshot of the Spalding County bank accounts shows that the total of all checking and investment accounts as of March 31st has a combined total of 82.68 million, representing a $23 million growth since the start of the fiscal year. Can I ask yes, you a question? This is probably nothing but the last slide that you had 
Is that supposed to add up to more than 100%? No, ma'am, it's a negative 2.1 on other costs. Oh, okay. Cost. All right. Because I had And like then it'll add up to 100%. Yes, ma'am, it's a negative number. Okay. If you have any other questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Any comments or questions? Um, well, they changed the screen really quick. Go back one second. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm looking for remaining SPLOS revenue in the 2016 SPLOS. Is that 1.9? Yes, ma'am, it is. Okay, that's all. Do all right. we do we already have like is that going to have to go to I know the aquatic center was the last building does that have to go is that going towards that like is no, there more cost the gym is the last building that, the gym that's correct okay okay heritage gym is the the last building okay I that's just right. didn't yep. know what else we that is correct all right great news that's great news thank okay. you motion to approve uh, Mr Chairman I would like to make a motion to accept the financial report as presented all right second. I have a motion and a second any more discussion. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hands. Four zero. Thank you. Thank you. Item number five, presentations and proclamations. We're going to have a number of presentations and proclamations tonight, uh, so everybody understands kind of the concept behind it. We're going to read, then we're going to vote, and then we're going to have photos. So on each one of them, we'll have a read, then a vote, and then the photos to be able to be done. All right, we'll start with item number one, proclamation for volunteer month in Spalding County. Uh, Mr. Peter Phelps. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening. Glad I brought my glasses tonight. <laughs> Good evening, Peter. A proclamation recognizing Volunteer Appreciation Month. Whereas National Volunteer Month is an opportunity to recognize and honor the countless individuals who selflessly invest in the lives of others. And whereas we have never needed the volunteerism of America more than we do today. And whereas volunteers are vital to our future as a caring and productive community. And whereas, volunteering one's time, talent, and resources has been an integral part of our heritage, and it is essential that we continue this tradition of giving and sharing to preserve and improve the quality of life for all residents in our community. And whereas, volunteers are the catalyst that create positive changes in our communities by bringing their compassion their time, their ideas, talents, technical skills, and professional expertise to strengthen and help our county flourish. As society's needs change, volunteers are at the heart of community life, lending a hand to create a better quality of life for our residents. And whereas, volunteers provide support to recreation activities, public education, health and social services, housing and food service organizations, public safety, emergency preparedness and response, and to environmental initiatives. Volunteers help communities provide basic human services, spiritual support, including neighbor to neighbor assistance. And whereas the receiver is not the only one who benefits from volunteer service, for the giver reaps the rewards of improved skills and widened horizons as well. And whereas each year, a special month is designated in our nation for the dual purpose of recognizing those who give of, the, of themselves and of encouraging all citizens to become involved in volunteer work. And it is fitting at this time to say thank you to all individuals, groups, in businesses who have given time, energy, re and resources to our community through selfless service. And whereas, during this month, we call on all community members and organizations to help us thank, celebrate, and recognize the contributions of all volunteers. Now, therefore, 
be it resolved that the Spalding County Board of Commissioners do hereby recognize the month of April as Volunteer Appreciation Month in Spalding County, Georgia, and encourage community members of all ages and abilities to follow the example of our neighbors, friends, and family by saying yes to service. By volunteering, we gain knowledge, compassion, and understanding, and create a spirit of friendship and connectedness with our neighbors and our community. Do I have a motion to approve? Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to approve the, uh, the uh, four red proclamation. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Four zero motion carries. All right, uh, it's now photo time. Kelly, if you'll have all your people who want to come forward. I would just like to say, as, as a, a, the commissioner who has been serving on the Leisure Services Board, I would just like to say thank you to all of the volunteers. I know a, a lot of the guys who volunteer through Leisure Services on all levels, but when you really start thinking about how this community works, we have people who volunteer at the animal shelter on a daily basis. We have people who volunteer at the senior center on a daily basis. People who volunteer at the rec center. We've got people who are mentors. We've got people who are foster parenting in this community. There's just a huge amount of people that make stuff happen here. And it's just, it's, it's, we need to make sure that you guys are recognized. Because you don't have to get up and leave out of your house and come and take care of somebody else's stuff. So I just want you to know how grateful I am and how grateful this board is um, for how good y'all make us look in the community. Just, just Amen. thank you. Amen. Uh, item number two, proclamation for Senior Hunger, Hunger Awareness Month. Uh, Anna Bing, Ms. Anna Bing. We're in the read, vote, photo <laughs> opportunity again, so everybody understands. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Good, Good evening. evening. 
this, pro this proclamation rec is recognizing Senior Hunger Awareness Month. Whereas the health and safety of all seniors in Georgia is important to the growth, prosperity, and well-being of our state's families, communities, and economy. And whereas the month of April is Senior Hunger Awareness Month, which provides an opportunity for communities across Georgia to focus on the serious problem of senior hunger and to mobilize a movement to help end senior hunger in our state. And whereas, according to the latest report on the state of senior hunger from Feeding America, Georgia is ranked ninth in the number of food insecure seniors in the nation, meaning one in 12 seniors do not know how they will purchase their next balanced meal. And whereas food insecure seniors tend to have lower nutrient intakes, lower diet quality, more chronic health conditions, poor self-reported health status, lengthened hospital stays, and greater hospital readmission, cost-related medication, non-adherence, and out-of-pocket medical expenses. And whereas the state's 12 area agency on aging, aging services providers, food banks, farmers markets, volunteers, and generous community partners are committed to addressing senior hunger across Georgia's 159 counties. Now, therefore, the Spalding County Board of Commissioners do hereby recognize the month of April as Senior Hunger Awareness Month in Spalding County, Georgia. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to accept the proclamation as presented for Senior Hunger Awareness Month in Georgia. Do I have a second? Second. Oh, I have right. a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Thank you. Motion carries. All right. Uh, Come on, Amy. Kelly, if you'll. <laughs> Item number three, proclamation for the National Prayer Day on May 2nd, uh, 2024. Commissioner Dutton. Spalding County Proclamation, Day of Prayer in Georgia. Since the founding of our nation, Americans have turned to prayer for inspiration, for strength, and for guidance in order to walk humbly with God. The national importance of prayer traces its roots to our founding fathers as they declared freedom of religion as one of our nation's greatest needs. And whereas a national day of prayer was first established by the Continental Congress in 1775, and the United States Congress in 1952 approved a joint resolution setting aside a day each year to recognize the tradition of prayer in our nation. And whereas 
We are afforded the privilege of prayer and the joy of seeking guidance, strength, comfort, and inspiration from Almighty God. Regardless of our individual beliefs and faith practices, we have an assurance that God hears our prayers and faithfully responds to our petitions. And whereas Georgians have been blessed, and we have faith that this is a direct result of the heartfelt prayers of citizens and families, we are proud to join with other counties across Georgia on May 2nd, 2024, in a day of prayer. Now therefore be it resolved, we, the Spalding County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim May 2nd, 2024, as National Day of Prayer in Spalding County, Georgia, and encourage our citizens to pray for God's blessing on our nation and her people. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the county to be affixed thus this 15th day of April, the year of our Lord, 2019. Clay Davis, Steve. 2024. 20, 20, 20, 20, let's, let's get that, let's get that changed. Mr. Thank you. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to accept the proclamation for a National Day of Prayer on May 2nd, 2024 in Spalding County. I have a motion and a second. Just one minute. Cindy, have you got something you'd like to step forward and say before we vote? Well, it can't be said any better than the proclamation that was just read. Thank you so much. And thank you again. You are so faithfully willing to allow us to meet and praise the Lord in a, in a very non-denominational cross county meeting and event and we love it when y'all come out so please come out if you want to may 2nd 12 o'clock at the courthouse i will be there all right uh, i have a motion and a second any more discussion uh, you didn't have a second i'll have a second okay thank you i'm sorry all right all those in favor please signify by raising your hand four zero motion carries if you got folks you want to Come on, Cindy. Yep, that's close enough. That's good enough. You're always good enough. We'll get that 19 change to 24, too. We're so excited about it. Well, I hope you come on that day and read it. I love it when you do that. Unless I'm important. All right, are we centered on it when judges tell me? You're good. Okay. All right, everybody look at me. One, two. Look at her. Thank you. Congratulations. Item number five, presentation to the 21st Annual Praying Proctor uh, Lifetime Volunteer <laughs> Service Award. I'd like to table this at this time. Do I have a motion to table? Motion uh, to table. Uh, I think we skip one. We skip one. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, proclamation for Autism Awareness Month. Taylor, you're up. Thank you. Uh, Autism spectrum disorders are a broad range of conditions characterized by challenges with social skills, repetitive behaviors, and speech and nonverbal communications. And whereas symptoms and characteristics of autism spectrums may present themselves in a variety of combinations and can result in significant lifelong difficulties in verbal and nonverbal communication, social interaction, and leisure, leisure activities, and whereas an Autism, autism spectrum disorder has wide-ranging implications for the entire family of the diagnosed individual. Early diagnosis, research, training, education, and therapy are vital to reducing the negative effects of the disorder. And whereas the Center for Disease Control and Prevention reports that about one in six in 36 children have been identified with autism spectrum disorder, and whereas autism spectrum disorders are complex and re require research to find cures and effective methods of prevention, increased recognition and understanding of autism are necessary to ensure that individuals are accurately diagnosed and appropriately tre treated throughout their lives. And whereas it is in the interest of Spalding County to recognize achievements in this field and to continue these efforts pr by promoting awareness, care, services, and opportunities for individuals affected by autism, 
so that they may achieve their greatest potential. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Spalding County Board of Commissioners do hereby, hereby proclaim April 2024 as Autism Awareness Month in Spalding County. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Taylor. Mr. Chairman. motion to approve? I would like to make a motion to approve the proclamation uh, recognizing this month as the Autism Awareness Month. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. I have a right. motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. 4-0, motion carries. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I just wanted to make a comment. I thank you, Taylor, for reading that. That was lo took a lot of courage, and you did a great job. Um, but this just having this read today just enforces what the chairman and I are saying about addressing and talking about mental health. Um, when you have a heart attack or when you got heart problems, you don't tell people, I have physical health problems. You say, I have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When we talk about mental health, we don't talk about autism. We don't talk about anxiety. And the only way that we're going to really understand that it's OK not to be OK with mental health, not to have that, is for us to name the illness that we're talking about. So again, we, we're trying to learn to encourage people to address ADHD to address depression, to, depress, uh, to talk about anxiety. It's not mental health. It's a thing. Right. So, so let's, let's call it what it is. So I thank you so much for bringing that awareness about autism, because the more that we talk about it, the more people will accept and understand what the illness is. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's very well said. Uh, all right, back to number of five, Mo presentation of the 21st uh, an, uh, Annual Bang Proctor Lifetime Volunteer Service Award. I'd Wish like to table it. this. All right. Second. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Four zero. Uh, we just can't get the people here at the right time. <laughs> Item number six, presentation of John Dennis Parks Maintenance Technician for 35 years of service. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is an exciting night. Uh, Spalding County took over Parks and Recreation in 1991. Three years before that, Mr. John Dennis started with the City of Griffin at the Parks Department. So he's been here longer than anybody in Parks and Leisure Services. Wow. It's very exciting, which also means that he's been here for the building of our great department. He knows where everything's buried. <laughs> Literally. He has also worked for three Parks and Recreation directors, four county managers, countless commissioners. He resides in Pike County. His favorite hobby now is raising his grand youngins. His best buddy is Rocky, his dog. <laughs> he drives an amazing antique 65 Ford pickup. Mm. And he owns a herd of squirrels that just happen to eat all of his tomatoes. <laughs> so it is a great pleasure tonight to present Mr. John Dennis with 35 years of service to the citizens of Spalding County.
I just want everybody to know it's been a pleasure working for Spalding County all these years. All right. Thank you. Congratulations again. <laughs> Item number six, citizen comments. Speakers must sign up prior to the meeting and provide their names, addresses, and the topic they wish to discuss. Speakers must direct your comments to the board and not to individual members or to the audience. Personal disagreements with individual members or county employees are not a matter of public concern and personal attacks will not be tolerated. The chairman has the right to limit your comments in the interest of disposing of the county's business in an efficient and respectful manner. Speakers will be allocated three minutes to speak on their chosen topics as they relate to matters pertaining to the jurisdiction of the Board of Commissioners. No questions will be asked by any of the members during citizen comments. Outbursts from the audience will not be tolerated. Common courtesy and civility are expected at all times during the meeting. No speakers will be permitted to speak more than three minutes or more than once unless the board votes to suspend this rule. Uh, Dr. Ledbetter, do we have anybody who signed up? Yes, sir, we do. We have three who have signed up this evening. Uh, Julia Maloney. Maloney. <coughs> Please state your name and address. Good evening, Julia Maloney, 916 Hamilton Boulevard. And I am here tonight to update the board about the animal shelter. And I wanted to come in and say that it has been amazing. The changes at the animal shelter have been incredible. More dogs are getting out daily for exercise. We really want to thank Public Works for the amazing runs that they built. We thought yeah. we were going to get these like little 10 foot runs, you know? No, these things are gigantic. Um, we're here tonight, the volunteers, to thank the Board of Commissioners, to thank you, Dr. Ledbetter. But most of all, we want to thank Spalding County Animal Control staff. They have been just incredible. I mean, they really have. They are working their tails off down there to improve the shelter. And we're here to fight for them, too, that they receive good pay, that they are taken care of by the county. They are the guardians, the protector, and the liberators of the unwanted and abused animals in our county. And we want to make sure you have a staff down there that is a crucial asset to this county. And we want to make sure they're well taken care of, that they stay, that we always have them. So uh that's really all we wanted to update tonight is the dog runs are an awesome it's just like everybody is working together down there and it is just it's been really amazing progress and i want to thank the board and the county manager and i want to thank spalding county animal control staff you guys are killing it keep up the good work thank you spalding county for showing up and showing out i mean this has been great at the shelter Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Allison Burley. <laughs> you don't know. Yeah. Good evening. Um, my name is Allison Burley. I live at 2785 Highway 81 West in Hampton, Georgia. I have worked at the shelter for seven months as a volunteer. And I am so happy tonight when I saw extraordinary session up on the board. I thought, wow, it sure is. And, um, and I just ha can't contain my excitement. Um, Dr. Ledbetter, you said that we need something different. And you and the county commissioners, whoever did the hiring, you all have definitely brought leadership into the shelter that is moving it forward. Um, it is so exciting to go in. And today I went in and 
all the dogs had already been walked in the whole shelter. Every dog had been walked. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I was so excited. Anyway, and this is not just a one day occurrence, it's happening every day. And um, I just can't tell you how it does my heart good. Um, and also the cats are getting out every day. Um, they've got special food for the kitties. They've got special food for the puppies. Um, people are really taking care of the animals. That's all we volunteers want. We just want the animals taken care of, just their basic needs. And, and it's even more than that right now. So I just wanted to share that because I know you all have heard a lot of, uh, and who wants to hear that anymore? Um, and now it's just all good, and it's just so amazing. So um, um, I just want to tell you just a few more things. Um, most of the dogs have dog beds now. Some of the dogs eat their beds. They just do. And so we try to make new ones. So they're letting volunteers make beds. So that's what we did today. Um, let's see. The six runs are amazing. They are huge. And they have grass, which the dogs really need to feel the grass. So you all thought of that and did that. It's great. And um, they do need a little covering on the top for shade. Some of the dogs have dark hair. Um, especially the black dogs, they get so hot in the sun. So I'm sure you all probably have something in motion to have a little shade for them. But I just wanted to mention that. Um, everybody got vaccinated today. Holy moly. That means that rescues all over the state of Georgia, when we reach out to them now, not me personally, but um, the people in charge, um, they're going to want to take some of our animals, which will be good for the shelter because there's another hoarding case, blah, blah, blah. But they're, they're going to want to take them because they've been vaccinated. And so many now have been neutered and um, spayed, and it's just, it's just wonderful. Um, we have all these people. You all have been a great community. Um, always coming in with food and little potty pads and all these things for puppies and kittens. It's just, it's all just so beautiful. Um, 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 um. Oh, and now the intakes are finally being um, advertised on social media. So anybody who's lost a dog or lost a cat, you know, they're getting their pictures out there right away. And so people can see, oh my gosh, my, my dog's at the shelter. I'm going to go pick him up, you know. So that's good. They, they weren't doing that before. Um, everything is cleaner. It smells nicer. Um, all the employees are working well together. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I want to say thank they're you. doing a good job at Animal Shield. I want to say thank you to uh, Miss Gwynn and James, to you. Both of you have worked tirelessly to be able to move this project along and get us in the shape we're in. So thank you for all of the commissioners to you too. Uh, last up this evening is Maria Arbolida. Arbolida. If you would please come forward, state your name and your address for the record, please. Good evening. Good evening. The address is 1006 Morrow, Griffin, Georgia. Um, this is for um, the permit, the amplification permit for a wedding. This is one day um, event we are planning um, to start around 5 o'clock to uh, 2, 2 a.m. Um, we have planned mariachis, DJ, and also we have we have a band. We have also uh, invited our neighbors, and also um, we um, we um, if they cannot go to the wedding, they um, we send them a letter to let them know that we're gonna have loud music. But this is this permit is more for um, we don't want to get this is one day event this is a big day uh, it's a wedding she um, the bride is one of my best friends so I'm trying to get everything in right place so we don't get the party shut down around ten o'clock twelve so um, that that's my my case <laughs> yes for this permit. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank uh, you. This case will come up in just a few minutes. Okay. We understand. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, that's all that we have for uh, public hearing. All right. Item number seven, minutes. Consider approval of the minutes from the Spalding County Board of Commissioners work session and regular meeting on April 1st, 2024. Do I have a motion to approve? Uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Minutes, sorry. Um, a motion to approve the minutes. All right, I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. For motion carries. Thank you. Sorry to get item, talk, talk New item talk. number one. Uh, this is an item to uh, approve oh, yeah. the hybrid uh, pay study uh, using uh, starting 1 July 
and using the FY24 uh, funds. Do I have a motion to approve? Miss motion. motion to approve. Motion. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Thank you, Dr. Yes. Ledbetter, for making, making sure this happened. You, you yeah. really pulled this out for us. We're so and incredibly grateful for you and your hard work. And secondly, uh, just so everybody knows, although Ms. Rita is not here with us tonight, uh, she is in support of this action. Uh, this has been many years getting us to this point, and uh, this is a culmination of uh, lots of years of being able to take care of uh, our most valuable resource, our uh, employees. All right, with that said. Effective July 1. Effective July, July 1. 1. All, all, those, uh, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, uh, the new item number two, consider request to use the veranda of the courthouse for National Prayer Day on May 2nd. Motion to approve. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. 4-0. Motion gonna, carries. It's going to be a great event. I hope everybody shows up. Thank you. Nice. Item number two, consider acceptance accepting a boost grant MOU in the amount of 50000 with GRPA for purpose of conducting accelerated learning programs during summer camp. Ms. Carmichael. Yes, this is our third memorandum of agreement with GRPA to provide accelerated learning opportunities for our youth during the summer. So this money allows us to hire certified teachers, create learning blocks, and provide programming uh, that's within the framework of the whole, whole child toolkit. And this happens at Fairmont, right? Fairmont and City Park, two oh, locations, Park. Okay. 110 oh, okay. children. Wow. Mo motion to approve. All right, I have a motion to approve and a second. Uh, any more discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Uh, four zero, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for this, Kelly. Thank you very much. Item number three, consider approval of the amplification permit for a wedding at 1006 Moore Road. Director. Thank you, Chairman. Um, we heard, of course, from a very enthusiastic applicant uh, or spokesperson on their behalf. So this is uh, 1006 Moore Road. It's a, 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 the parcel's in excess of 50 acres. The request is to do it, as she mentioned, from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. on the wedding date of May the 11th, 2024 and all the surrounding properties are AR. So obviously this is a decision that the Board of Commissioners is asked to, to make when it's anything beyond the nine o'clock hour. Our, our ordinance indicates that um, we will cut it off at 9 p.m. in the evening for noise. Um, Unless without approval. Correct. That's right. And the staff recommendation? Do we, do we have concurring con, uh, contact with the neighborhood? Well, we have not received any communication from the neighbors, but I, I will say, I think 2, 2 a.m. is excessive, and I mm -hmm. think I would re uh, the staff would recommend midnight. Beginning at what time? And 5, 5, 5 p.m. Yeah. Would you be okay with cutting off at midnight? But I, I'm one of your neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the question is, would you be? Now, I'm deaf, so it won't bother me, but I, it's, it, that is, 2 o'clock is a pretty excessive. So um, if you can get them tone it down by midnight, we'll follow you. Okay, I mean, I, I'm, I'm fine with it. I know that we but don't what, usually make an exception or mid, uh, with, midnight? with midnight, but I would only support it to the extent that we can look and see how this works and that we get feedback, good or bad, from the neighborhood. Yeah, amplification, I mean, if they want to have music and dancing, this is, this is one thing. If you want to have, you know, ZZ Top level uh, amplification, maybe that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, so there might, we might need to revisit sort of oh, just amplification, you know, because it's sort of a blanket, like, you're going to be landing jets out there, you know what I mean? Like, that's, but if it's a little bit of backyard music in a, in a pole barn, like, that's not... But technically, they need that, but like then you're not going to bother anybody. But if you're testing gender planes, you know. But I do think it's worthy to mention that it is a 50 in excess of 50 acres, and the house is situated more centrally on the property. 
if that okay. matters. So yeah. the, the, the question would be is how far would you even have to right, right, be right. or close would you have to get to, to hear the hear? amplification? Yes. Do, don't we have something in our policy about this that asks us to either notify their neighboring parcels? Don't they, don't they what, to, not they necessarily have to, they have to, to get post right on the road. Right? Letters. You did send. You yes. send yes. Please, please, please come forward. So we're, we're broadcasting, so we need everybody to hear. She got to yes. say her name again. Um, so we already did that. We invite all our neighbors, and also we send them a letter. Um, I think is attached to the permit. The letter that we send notify them that we have a wedding, and it's gonna be. Um, we're gonna have noise. The noise doesn't start at five o'clock. At the beginning, they're gonna have only um, that is. Uh, only like mariachis, it's not with um, with amplificators. Um, the uh, the music is start around na the loud music is gonna start around nine o'clock mm -hmm. mm -hmm. because we have a band that's gonna um, oh, has said. like four hour show mm -hmm. and they're gonna have um, two hour show. Then uh, they're gonna have a break and then to to the other two hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And now, so we're gonna have a tent. It's not. Uh, it's not open. If we're gonna have a tent to get to try to get the uh, music inside the tent for, for um, for the people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. If you're good with. Yeah, a motion to approve, but I'd like to amend it to to midnight, if I may. Okay. All right. I have a motion to midnight. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Four zero. Yeah, maybe we need like general amplification, <clears throat> extreme amplification. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe there needs to be like, because if I'm if me with a megaphone, technically I've got to have amp. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe there needs to be brackets or something. Like that. Okay, we'll we'll take a look. I don't at know. This one. Obviously, this usually you remember if this is usually his business. It yeah. takes care of this for us if, until it gets over five hours. Five yeah, sure. Hours. Yeah. Then, it, then it has to come to us to be able to do it. Well, okay. It's, it's all, it should all be based on like how much noise is on the able to be heard on the neighbor's property. You know what I mean? Like, because that's what the noise ordinance is all about. You know, but, we, we've but, got some properties that you could put the noise in the middle of it. Yeah, no one's going to ever hear yeah, yeah, yeah. all the way around it. No. Yeah, that is just a wormhole to go into. Yeah, but you know. Um, good luck, Steve. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, obviously, we don't expect this. Anytime. Item number four: consider the approval of the final plat for Patterson Road, which consists of four lots and zoned AR1, agriculture and residential. Director. Oh, uh, yes, sorry, Chairman. The applicant is here. I wanted to say that in case there was a, an opportunity that they might want to speak. Now, because it's a division in excess of three. Uh, it does require your approval for the mm -hmm. subdivision. It, every one of the four lots is in excess of four acres, the largest one being six. Where there was an uh, earlier iteration of the plat that did not uh, meet staff approval because the fire hydrant uh, did not mm -hmm. have the distance, didn't mm -hmm. meet the distance requirements, but they have since uh, rectified that, so the plans do show that the fire hydrant distance will be satisfied. So we would recommend approval of this uh, final plat, but again, I don't know if you want to speak to the applicant. Yeah, always, if the applicant would like to step if forward. They, if they want to. Okay, very okay. good. Okay, all right. Uh, so I have a question. Yes, um, please. Sylvia. So this is a, approval of the final plat, but in order to subdivide, you can only subdivide a piece of property how many times? Well, it, it depends on the size. And for the, and for minor. It, it, well, if it, anything in excess of three takes the Board of Commissioners' approval. And so if it was only three parcels, it wouldn't have to come before you. Well, I'm looking at the map, and I only see actually two lots. I, I, we don't have a map that's really. OK, There's that's not in the packet. Stephanie says there's four on the plan if you don't yeah, if, if that. Um, Do you need to see a bigger vision of it? Well, yeah, I was looking for it in the packet. Coming down. Oh, that's real big. 
So, oh, okay, thank you. So, so what is the basic ordinance for this? If, it, if a piece of property is subdivided more than three times, and here we have one, two, three, four, five. Is it five or six? It used to be four. Because that's not, there's lot one, lot two, lot three, and lot four. That's somebody else's. That's somebody else's. Yeah, okay. so, so all you're looking at on this final plat is the, the lots that they have subdivided. So they've, they've subdivided their property into that additional four lots, all and in they, excess of new roads four acres. A, 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 and, yeah. and the zoning for there is... Is AR, yep. yes. which requires a, how, well, how much acreage on AR1? Three, Three acres. Oh, okay. And road frontage is, is being met? Yes, ma'am. Fire hydrant coverage? Yes, ma'am. Was rectified? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure. Here, you can come get your big paper back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, do I have motion to approve? Uh, motion. And are all of these on the same... The driveway cuts are all on the same yeah, yeah, side Patterson. of the frontage. From Patterson, yes. Yeah. From Patterson, yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, motion to approve. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? We all those in favor, yeah. please raise your hand. 4 0, motion carries. Mm -hmm. Thank you, board. Thank you, guys. All right, item number. Uh, Six, which is a new six on the agenda, says five. Consider a contract from the county attorney, Beck Owen and Murray. Do I have a motion to approve? Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to approve uh, the contract between Beck, uh, the count, for county attorney between Beck Owen and Murray and Spalding County Board of Commissioners. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Oh. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Well, we, we looked it over. There was some talk. We got some outside counsel to come in and look at it. Um, all three of these are just one-year appointments that, that re-up. So, yeah, everything looks good with these. All right. Uh, uh, any more discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. 4-0. Motion carries. Congratulations, Stephanie. Thank you. Item number seven, consider a contract with human resource attorney Jarrett and Davis. Motion to approve? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. 4 0. Same Thank thing. You. Same thing with this one. Like all, all three of these should be one year. I, Item number eight consider a contract with zoning attorney Galloway and Lindell. Uh, motion motion to, approve. to approve, Mr. Chairman. All right, and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. 4 0. Item number, new item number nine. Consider the Department of Community Development new beer, wine, alcohol license. Consider the approval of the new 2024 alcohol license, new ownership for the retail sale of beer and wine at the following. Sitco Griffin, 1639, located at 1639 North Hill Street, Griffin, Georgia, 30223. Yes, yes, thank you, Chair. So uh, this is an existing business that has an existing license, but because of new ownership, a new license is required. Uh, worthy of note is that there is the same service. The background check uh, revealed no violations for the new owner. No survey was necessary because it's an existing license. And so it, we're just seeking the, the approval and would recommend the approval for the new liquor license for the Thank new Thank you, owner. Director. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. So I have a motion and a second. Uh, any more discussion? Um, I'd just like to kind of do a follow-up on our alcohol ordinance. Now, I know it's, it's something if we can do that workshop pretty quick. We still got some folks waiting, and they've been waiting like November of last year. Yes, sir, we do. The... Um, the staff is meeting again on Friday of this week uh, to finalize the draft for your consideration. Uh, we're working to get that to you as quickly as we can. Awesome. Thank you. So are we looking to go with what the state recommends or do are we following our own little lead on this? Uh, well, it's, it's a long ordinance, so in some situations we are making adjustments to match the state, and in other situations there are going to be things that are judgment calls on your behalf, which okay. is why we want to workshop it. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. 4-0. Motion carries. Thank you, Board. Who seconded 
Thank you, Director. Uh, Item number 10, consider entering, enter, entering a contract with C.W. Matthews for paving in the amount of $5,811,307 to include the alternate option to include a change order to add Brooks Road, Southern, South Pine Road, Hillview Road, Mobley Road, North Walker's Mill Road, and Mentor Road. Director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And if you would indulge me, I'd like to be the first one to publicly thank you from our employees of Spalding County. Thank you. They're right, well worth it. Yes, they are. All right. Hang on for the ride. <laughs> uh, this is, so we're going to be talking about resurfacing of roads. This is a list of the past two years. This is year one and year two of the current five-year t splost mm -hmm. So all of these roads have already been resurfaced. We are now presenting to you the uh, year three list and some very good changes, we hope. So Rehoboth Road on year three, you can see that's the first one here in 2024. That will be uh, part of our LeMig and paid for with our LeMig funds. Uh, we have removed Jackson Road as that is on hold. We're waiting for um, further information from GDOT and their decision. We are proposing to take three roads from year four and move them to year three. That would be Mobley Road, North Walker's Mill Road, and Mentor Road. What, why those roads? They are um, on the list, and one of those was, Mobley was requested in the current striping um, that we approved, that you approved with the um, Road Improvement Fund a couple weeks ago, uh, but we did not want to stripe that since it was going to be done next year, so we're moving that into year three. Uh, North, North Walker's Mill Road, uh, to be very blunt, it's, you could ride down and see why we would want to move that. That would be an excellent move and will save a lot of resources to get that resource uh, to resurfaced. And then uh, Minter Road was right on close to the top of the list. You're not seeing the order. You're just seeing the actual names. And then I went to the top of the list and picked it from there. So what we have is a new pr proposed year. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot one. Where did I go here? Let me go back. OK, and then what you missed here was the next three, which would be Brooks Road, South Pine Hill Road, and Hillview Road. Now, we have already been approved for our LR. A, which would be Hillview Road. We would be, uh, be in cooperation of Henry County. This was on the year four list. I made a mistake and error and said otherwise at the last meeting. So this is coming from the year four list. So We're, the money that we got from the LRA then that we said we would spend to jointly do this road is actually money that should be a T-splot. It should have been a t splice project. Correct. So we're actually paying for it with other funds in conjunction with the state GDOT and Henry County. And we would like to also add Brooks Road. That would be part of the LRA. And then add South Pine Hill. And we're in discussion with the city of Griffin to also assist with that project. OK, so, so this, is, this is my concern about that. I'm sure you haven't got to the end of your report but I shared this with you earlier. We, we made a decision last week to spend this additional money that the state gave us that we don't have to match on roads that we have already allocated t splos money on. I have a problem with that. You got t splos money. There are other roads in the county that could use that million and whatever else dollars. And, and then particularly on South Pine Hill and on, I think it's Hillview, we were going to have to pay for the entirety of those roads to be paid. Am I correct? 
most of South Pine Hill, there's a little piece of City Griffin, and we would have had to have paid for our share of Hillview, the entire road, but it's just one side. Right, so now we're only paying one side, which means half of the T-SPLOS money that would have paid for that, the whole road is sitting. It's available, and if you'll... I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I, I think I can lay it out at the, by the end of the presentation. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead and finish, but I, I'm, 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 I don't understand how come if you got a big pot of money that you're already planning to fix the road with, why you would take additional money that may go somewhere else and do potholes or work on a bridge or do some of the other roads that were on the list like um, Pine View, is it? Pine View that I'm Yes, it's going to be Pine View, and I have requested a TOF from Paragon. So I will be presenting you a TOF for construction plans and bid administration for that road in the next two, next two meetings. So, so the point that I'm trying to make here is that we got extra money for road work. We have a list for t splots already. You're going to move t sploss roads up, but you're not going to pay for it with t sploss money. That's crazy. That money should be going into roads in a budget where there is not already money allocated. Yes, ma'am. The thought process was to capitalize on our partners that are also going to assist us in paving roads for Spalding County. So No problem about that, but that money should come from t sploss since it was on the list for the next year is my point. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm saying that to you, but I don't hear none, none of y'all saying anything. All right, go on with your briefing. Let's, let's get to So the this would be the proposed year three list, and this would be a map of what that would look like. Uh, Hillview is not on there, but it would be on the top, and Brooks is not on there. So let me break down the cost. So this would be the total cost for us uh, without partners. As you can see, I've added everything together. It's $8.5 million with our partners, and we wouldn't do those roads until our partners are 100% within us because there's going to have to be some MOUs and further discussion. We would actually be able to do all that for $3.6 million. And so that's a total of 8.8 .8 minus the 3.6. That's our contribution from other partners. So I'm gonna, we would be able to do this year's rows for 5.1 million. Here's the exciting part, is that last year we spent 5.6 million to do 20 miles. This year we could do 530 miles, almost 31 miles for 5.1 million, which last year we had a per mile cost of 277,000. Working with our partners, we could bring that down to 168,000 so I'm saving $108,000 per mile, and that is $3.3 million of savings to the taxpayers. No, that's $3.3 million of t plots, t splos money. That's not taxpayer money. That is collections from t splos Yes, ma'am. I apologize. So, so that paints a very good picture, but my point is still... Why would we take the $1.3 million that they allowed us to be able to put to roads and put it in the t sploss budget? If we're only going to pay for half of it, why can't the half of it still come out of t sploss instead of the whole money? I was just making a proposal. No, no, I'm not I, asking you. I'm asking them. I'm asking them. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you because I know you don't have <laughs> yes, a vote. So help me understand this. Because I don't hardly have any roads in, in the five years of this plus that are getting fixed. I have a road in my district that is a dirt road that is on the made, that is on the transportation planning plan, seven year comprehensive plan. It is a, uh, a road that creates cross, cross county access from McIntosh all the way to the end below the hospital but everything else is in front of it. Now, I, I sat and I, and I understood why I wasn't getting very many roads done in my district because of the way the list was set up. But I'm not gonna be able to sit here and, and let y'all take money that could be fixing other things out of t splos when you've already made clear that 
you expect to have more than $3.8 million in excess T-SPLOS funds at the end of the SPLOS. So I'm going to need for y'all to give my district a break. I need to have something done in my district. We did a, a, a road study, right, that had all the different roads. It wasn't just T-SPLOS right. roads, but like all the roads. Right. Um, What? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Commission. There was a road study, a road assessment that was done approximately seven years ago. We currently have a new assessment that's out to bid that will be opening next week. So we could provide you with information for additional funds or additional uh, road list. We have, I've, I have ordered the task order form for the road that uh, Commissioner Flowers Taylor is asking about. Uh, we did, you all approved a TOF on that last year for a study. Uh, that study has come back, so now we have estimated costs. Now we have to go ahead and do construction documents and then bid that road out so that I can provide you with cost on how much it would be to do Pine View. To, to pave that road, is that what we're saying? It's for a full paving. It's, it's for a full paving. So we already have the right-of-way. So Pine View is just above uh, East, East McIntosh, technically, and it goes to Dobbins Mill Road. So it ends, goes into gravel. There's also a very um, difficult hill that's there that we will have to blast so that we can bring the sight distance, increase our sight distance so that we have additional safety. Uh, the right-of-way was uh, uh, received by the county a so while ago, so 10, 15 years ago. years ago. So all the right-of-ways on both sides. Yes, already that's got. correct. And, and, so and we would everyone be, on the road is signed off because that was another that was a rule. Well, we already had, have the right-of-way. Everyone yes. on, the, on the road had to want right. the road to be paved. So I should be able to give you pricing on that road next four to five months, I believe. Um, we are working toward that. Yes. Um, Commissioner Flowers. Is, is Commissioner Flower Taylor is correct in that we're taking money, taking SPLOS money away from these SPLOS projects and to spend on mm -hmm. something else? I don't, I don't think we're no, taking away. No, you're not away. taking I think away I'm, from SPLOS and spending it on something else. You're taking monies that were given to us for road projects and you're fixing T SPLOS roads with them, list, roads that are on the right. list for so, T SPLOS already. So there's been money allocated in T SPLOS to fix these roads. Mm -hmm. So why take that additional money that we don't have to put a match with, $1.3 million that was given to us from DOT, why take that and stick it in the T-SPLOS bucket when you're already gonna have $4 million more to do additional roads with, even at the end of the project? That's with every road that we plan. That, I am saying correct. that this money should be used to completely pave this road that goes from Dobbins Mill Road all the way down to below the fairground, well, by then, the fairground. Then maybe we wait on this plan until we get the new road assessment to see what the road, what roads are and whatnot. I mean, is this we're, time sensitive? We're, we're actually doing exactly what uh, Commissioner Flowers Taylor just talked about. We are working with Paragon. Uh, we've issued the TOF for them to tell us how much it's gonna cost uh, to pave the road and get the construction documents ready so that we can put that out for bid. It is going to be a full pay for that area. Uh, there's rock we're going to have to blast to take the top of the hill off. Uh, we've already got that information from Paragon. Uh, the next opportunity for us is to get the construction documents so that we can pay and use funds to do exactly what you've just, you've just asked for. So, because I, if I understand, and I'm pretty sure I remember this correctly, it was the will of this board that the money for T-SPLOS would only be used for resurfacing. And so sidewalk. if you have, That's yeah, and sidewalk. So if you have excess, potentially three or four million dollars that are going to be excess, that you can do either sidewalks or whatever with, why take this additional money and spend it on some on roads that you already have, you already have um, money allocated for? So the the thought behind what um, TJ is discussing is move forward now with the monies that we have so that we can extend it. But don't take that money that uh, the state just gave us, that $1.03 million, and assign it to something else other than the road that you're discussing. Um, because there is a requirement 
where we have all of the right of way provided to us by the, uh, the landowners. We have that. The road is on the, the TSPLOS list for um, uh, dirt road improvement, but instead of dirt road improvement, it is our position that we pave, totally pave that road because it is an access between north and south. And it does provide us with um, some, some traffic relief. Uh, that is the premise for moving us forward with this uh, this project. I just wanted to be on the record that that I that I am fully aware that we have kind of veered off of our transportation plan. I don't know if it comes every seven years or eight years or whatever, but this road was one of the main roads that we talked about getting people from north um, north all the way across across town, not just North Hill Street. But that would be the only street between North Hill Street and Old Atlanta Road that would get you all the way to the south side of Griffin. Yes, ma'am. Without a, interruption. It's a challenge for us, too. Um, TJ could speak more about it, but with the rock in place, uh, it, it creates some challenges for us to grade that road. And we need to make sure that we're taking care of um, the road as it stands. But to do that, I think it makes just that much more sense to pave that road for the reasons that you've just presented. Okay, now I'm finished fussing. I'm, I'm having a hot flash. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? I think they did. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, did we already? No, I don't, I don't have a motion. So. Okay. okay, do I have do a motion we, to approve? I mean, do we, I think it's, I don't, I'm not saying it's a bad idea, but do we want to not hold off on until we get all those other plans back? I mean, I, well, when, we're, you, we're within you, the paving season for this year, and uh, CW Matthews is ready? ready to move forward with our paving. And so it, it would be our recommendation to move forward with the understanding that we are coming back to you uh, for um, uh, North Pine Hill. Is that right? It would, it would be all of the extra roads that are not part. So it'll be uh, Brooks Road, South Pine Hill, Hillview, Mobley, North, North Walker's Mill, Mill, and Mentor. Those would be change orders. Um, I would want the original list at year three, which is the 5.8 million. I would ask if you could approve that at minimum. CW Matthews is ready to start Wednesday. So because you're waiting on Jackson Road, which is five miles. Yes. This, that won't really make the money that much different because you're adding these other miles to it. That's so this is just adding extra miles to the year three. That is correct. Not, yes, not changing. They were already on the list. They just got bumped up. That's I'm correct. just questioning From four which to three. pocketbook we're getting the money out of. Yes. So I, I make a motion to approve the request to make a change order for those roads into road, uh, year three of the t Sploth road resurfacing project. Same. All right. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Four zero. Thank you. Yes, sir. Director. And they'll start Wednesday. Oh. Once Steve yes. signs the contract. <laughs> okay, I, let's do it. I, new item 11, consider reappoint, or to consider appointment, uh, reappointment really and truly, of uh, Drew Miller to the Board of Health. If you remember, uh, we had a death. Yes. This fills out the rest of her uh, tour. There's nobody else in the book. Right. Uh, so I, I, would, I, I know Mr. Drew Miller. I would like to make a recommendation that he try to fill the seat that Cynthia was in. Nobody can fill that seat. Yes. Second. I already have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Drew's a fantastic guy. He's going to do great. He's got the experience and the knowledge. Yeah. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. 4-0. Thank you. Uh, item number nine, a report of the county manager. Um, just wanted to share with the board that the chair and I had a chance to uh, visit today with Commissioner McMurray with Georgia DOT. Um, and our city partners and the airport authority partners, uh, um, Dr. Randy Peters was there, um, Croy was there, Jessica and Doug were there, um, Dr. Solomon was there. Uh, we had a good conversation about the $47.2 million that was provided to us by the governor, um, Governor Kemp did an amendment to the 24 fiscal budget. And one of the comments that I took away from the discussion today from Commissioner McMurray was how fast can we move? 
Uh, mm. The understanding that we received from the conversation was that the $47.2 million has been unlocked uh, and they are waiting on us, we're not waiting on them. So uh, that was actually good news for us today. Uh, the, the chairman and I had a conversation with uh, Dr. Solomon and asked specifically if he could help us move forward with uh, releasing the requirements that are on the properties that are currently uh, under the airport authority's control for cleaning up that area because we have had some dumping in that area. Okay. Uh, they are working uh, very hard to relinquish those requirements so that we can move forward with cleaning up. Uh, was very impressed with the conversation, very pleased with the conversation that we had. Uh, both Commissioner McMurray and Dr. Solomon were um, very much inclined to move forward with the project and um, lots more to come. The second piece uh, that I'd like to share in maybe TJ, sorry, on please. Just one second on that. Uh, just remember this started out with the $7 million that mm -hmm. uh, city and us bonded to be able to get this. The bond goes through 32. So we still got a long way to be able to get, we put our skin in the game to be able to say that. Mm -hmm. The uh, FAA said we'll put $40 million in, but it's only gonna be the last $40 million. There's a whole bunch of money in between. Then uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, gave us uh, through GDOT out of the $90 million for uh, airports throughout the state, 47 million of it. So half the money that's gonna come in the entire state is coming in to us to be able to do that. And then uh, uh, Congressman Drew Ferguson put money in to be able to take care right. of us also. All of those monies are coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, and the point that uh, uh, the commissioner was trying to make is, I've got a lot of people who have said, okay, this is really important. We can't wait till five years from now before right. we start shoveling. We need to start seeing something now. And so we're going to, uh, he said, if you don't get it last week, I understand, but next week would be good to be able to start doing stuff. So we're gonna be trying to do that. Uh, the county manager gave a uh, very specific uh, accounting of dumping that has gone on and what we're trying to do. And then uh, Doug also talked about general trans, uh, the transmission, uh, that's going on with $13 million that who's gonna pay for it and everything else. So it was a good meeting. This meeting was a uh, uh, well done uh, meeting that uh, the Lieutenant Governor was supposed to be at and came in just as we were leaving from another meeting. So it's a powerful thing going on now. Thank yeah, you. and that's exactly what I was gonna say. Thank you very much. Um, the, the kudos go to Lieutenant Governor and our local delegation and beyond our local delegation. There were a lot of people who were supporting our efforts to bring a new airport into our community. So for each and every one of them, I'm, I'm sure I would miss somebody and I don't want to call out all their names, but for each and every one of them, I just want to say thank you. Marty Harbin, uh, Marty Harbin. Uh, did just a fabulous job for us. David um, Knight. David Knight did a fabulous job Figured out how to get the money and where it came from Beth to be Tim. able to do it. He's super at that. Beth was pushing all through the site her side of the house on that. It was, uh, it's, it's powerful to be able to see it when everybody turns their attention in one direction. Mr. Uh, Chairman. A hundred, hundred million dollar project yeah. that all of a sudden is all coming together to be able to do it. Mr. Chairman, and, and most especially um, Dr. Randy Peters, Absolutely. who along with um, Greg Teague with Croy Engineering have worked very quietly um, and don't care who gets the credit, but they certainly deserve it. Yeah, I agree. Okay, thank so, you. So thank, thank you to all of them for the work that they've done to bring our new airport um, to actually closure in a very short order. Uh, the next piece I'd like to share, and TJ, maybe you could help with this. Um, it was my understanding from having a conversation with Mr. Kevin King this morning that the Jordan Hill Bridge should be opened on April the 19th. Oh, May. That is 100% confirmed this Friday. Wow. We have passed our GDOT inspection and our staff has done a great job getting that ready. That's a Good job. order of magnitude $500,000 savings because of what TJ did through our own stuff. So when we talk about trying to find savings, uh, there's a yeah. big one. Good job. Well, that, that was gonna be my comment as oh, well. The, um, the team that put the work in to make this bridge 
a, a lot better than it was because if you had ever ridden up Jordan Hill and hit the approach on that bridge, it was, yeah. a, it was a good sized bump. Um, TJ took me out last week and we had a chance to walk the area and take a look at the work that this team has done and they have just done a fabulous job on this bridge. So yeah. kudos to his whole team. Um, thank you for all the work that you and your team have done to make that bridge um, more than what it was before, uh, mm -hmm. but for the savings that you provided our county, thank you very much. Yeah, the, what they did, we should not experience flooding in the future. We addressed that as well. And as a side comment, they're already working on the transmission lines for the airport. Me and the uh, contractor had a little impromptu meeting the other day. So that is that work is going as we speak. Okay. You. Yeah, utility relocation has been um, in, in process for several months now. Okay. So thank you very much. That's my update for this evening. All right. Commissioner Rutten? Um, I, won't, I won't tell you who or, or which counties, but I've been talking with some of our counterparts um, about this airport, Joint Airport Authority, and all. I'm sure it's not universal, but the ones I've talked to have simply said, Great, another board we have to be on. So uh, I know it's a joint airport authority, but I think it's still going to be predominantly us, uh, which, you know, in our opinion, as it should be. But uh, I, I'm, glad that, I'm glad that everyone else, I'm glad that it's getting done. I'm glad that they, they get a voice, but they're sort of underwhelmed by it. Yeah. Um, that, that said, I'm glad that uh, we're finally getting all the green lights. I know that we had our meeting last Monday at the airport authority. And it was all green lights, and then we said, okay, so all the money's in, and when can we break? And they said, ah, probably, you know, 2032, 20, 2030. 20, and we were like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> but it's, it's green lights. Surely you can, you know. Uh, so uh, it's good to know that that hopefully will continue to move yeah. closer and closer. Now, you know, obviously we don't know date yet, but boy, the speed of government sometimes. It's been when you got to get all the three letter agencies plus three different levels of government involved. Now regional, yeah. boy. Um, we we were doing some uh, the budget meetings this last week, and uh, we have, we have really got to continue doing what we need to do to to change the tax base in Spalding County towards commercial and industrial. Um, it's just I mean you can saw you saw the property tax uh, on the financial report tonight. It's just it's too much on the backs of the of the homeowners. It's just not fair. Um, I mean, look at the raw numbers compared to other counties in Georgia, and you go, what's the deal? Well, they all have industrial, and I mean, just the city of Peachtree City has more industrial jobs than our entire county. You know what I mean? Like, well, why, do they, why is their rate lower? That's why. That's why. That said, we have to make sure that the new commercial industrial doesn't interfere with the homeowners that we already got. So we've got some really staunch rules in place. Uh, I don't, I, it might be speed bumps for folks coming in, but I don't think it's going to stop them. I think they're still going to come. I think they're still going to open up, and I think it's going to be nice developments instead of uh, what is happening in other counties around us with uh, some of the congestion and the other problems that are that are you know coming from their development. Um, if I could make a comment yeah, please, on that, yeah. uh, today uh, the county manager took me out to look at River Pork. And, which is just on the other side of the interstate. Amazing. It is not what we're envisioning yeah. looking like. This is Some out of Gotham a 155 City. Henry County all over again. Yep. Ugly big buildings just sitting out there side by side by side to be Everything clear cut. We are not looking forward to that. So if you yeah. want to see what we're not going to do, in my yeah. opinion, yeah. we need to you just drive out there and drive through there quickly and you go, wow, this is... Yep. Not what's Spalding County uh, and our idea of what we want to be in the future. One of the things I've learned in my life is that you can learn something from everyone, but unfortunately sometimes it's what not to do. And, and that's what we're learning a lot from the surrounding industrial growth. Um, we still want it. Uh, we've got David Lucky has just done a stellar job over there. The lakes at Green Valley um, is just, it's just phenomenal. We're the only... Uh, green industrial park in the southeastern United States, period. And because of that, most of our growth comes internationally. 
people are coming from other countries, big firms from other countries, primarily Japan, seeking us out because of how well we're doing it. From literally across a continent and then across an ocean, people are coming here because of how well we're doing it. So I, on the other hand, again, it's you know, good news to bad news, um, you know, we lost four fire trucks. We're, our, our fire district, uh, we have the best chief in the state. He actually has the certificate to prove it. He's the best chief in the state. Uh, we have the best emergency management folks in the state. They have the piece of paper to prove it. We have the best SOPs in the state. People are coming to copy and paste ours uh, and some of the best employees in the state. And yet, these things still happen. You know, like there was total freak accidents beyond anyone's control. Um, and, and so it's really put us in a bad, bad position with, with fire districts. So um, I, I fully expect Chief Bird to keep pulling out miracles, but uh, it comes down to, to dollars at the end of, of, of the day. Um, so, uh, you know, we're in, a, we're in a bad financial situation there. We're, we're going to be able to recover, but it's, you know, how soon and how quickly and... We, we really, really, really don't want that insurance rating to drop for the citizens of the county because then they'd pay more in insurance, uh, homeowners insurance, than they would ever pay in um, um, cost increases from here. Um, you're exactly right, Commissioner, and I hope that our community saw this past week that we uh, just received two of our brand new trucks. Uh, they were delivered this past Friday. Um, they're undergoing the equipment being installed on those trucks here locally. And just in the next few weeks, uh, we'll be having what's called a push-in ceremony where we will physically have our fire department and our community push the truck into the bay for the first time. Um, we, we would very much welcome you being a part of that ceremony. I'd love to be there. Yes. Tell us I, the fact that we have them as quickly as we got them is a proof that Chief Bird is just a miracle worker. When we initially looked at, well, how do we replace this ladder truck? How do we replace these fire trucks? We were told it's a 40 month lead time. Mm -hmm. And it was gonna be 1.4 million. Not only was it hundreds of thousands less than that, but we've got them already. Chief Bird's a miracle worker. There's a reason he's the best fire chief in the state. Um, and I'll just end again on some good news. I hope to see everybody here and everybody up here at the National Day of Prayer on May 2nd. Uh, it's really a good program. Uh, the, the, the pastors do a great job. Okay. Commissioner flowers Taylor. Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. I, wherever Commissioner Johnson is, I hope she did a wahoo yeah. um, because we were able to get the uh, employees pay raise. Um, through. I, it makes me happy because that means I don't have to be ugly uh, about it in public. And that, had, that was my game plan. Um, but um, I like to give credit where credit is due. I had absolutely nothing to do with the airport money. I totally did not believe y'all was going to get any. So I'm just <laughs> like, hey, I. I take my hat off to you because the money is there, it's assigned, and you know, for those, I think, are you on the airport? Both of them. So, so yeah, y'all, y'all need to have y'all foot on the gas with them. Amen. Because, because, you know, let's not get to that place where the money gets to go back somewhere else because we didn't get our stuff done. So I'm so happy about that, and just. You know, that's just one other thing that we don't have to worry about that's in our major transportation plan. The other thing is that having a regional airport here means that we have to have road access. Roads access to get people from west to east without driving all through neighborhoods and from north to south. Because if we're expecting, you know, people to come from, if we're allowing people to, from uh, Upson and Butts to fly in the airport, it's not, you're still going to have people coming from Peachtree City or whoever. So we just need to make sure that the roadways that we have planned makes it easy for industry to be able to get to the airport and have access to that. Um, still waiting on when our guy gets, gets on track with code enforcement 
I'm telling people, call. You know, you've made your complaints over the last two years when we were, you know, in and out. Make that call again. The same problem that was here two years ago is still here so that we can, you know, restart readdressing all of those things. Um, I will feel a sight better once I can start feeling like I can drive down the road and not see somebody's furniture. Um, you know, house, 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 empty lot, furniture on the side of the road in front of it, and then next, next, next to somebody's house. So hopefully we're going to get that cleaned up. Um, aquatic Center. I almost said a thank you, Jesus, because when I realized that we were thinking of opening the Aquatic Center at the end of April and whatever happened with the electricity and the water, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, yeah. what if we were opening yeah. and, mm -hmm. and that was happening? So sometimes God does stuff for us we can't even do for ourselves. So I'm really glad that we pushed the opening back so that we can get that, yeah. whatever that is, fixed. Other than that, I'm... I'm good. Thank you guys for a great meeting. Uh, Vice Chair? Um, I'm extra excited about the uh, pay raises. And we got to do them a due service and make sure we follow up on this every year so we don't get in the same mess we were. We got to we gotta visit this because we're giving raises right now. The counties around us are giving raises too. So, I mean, it's gonna, they're going to always be just a touch ahead of us until we catch up. Um, and insurance. I'm going to say something about insurance again. It, it sucks. But every time I talk about it in here, my medicines magically appear. So I get like three months of medicines <laughs> that I don't want to take, but I got to because the wife makes them. But we we got we got to look into that and then try to fix that for the employees too because I do hear a lot about it uh, uh, being difficult to get the medications that they need. Um, I'm good. Okay. Uh, on roads, we're, the t is 100 miles, basically 100 miles, give or take, out of 400 miles of roads we've got. We've got a 300 miles we haven't talked about and aren't going to get through. So we've got a hump to go on uh, keep getting the roads all the way around. And there are some priority roads we need to be able to do something with. Uh, the pay, that's a 10-year effort, at least a 10-year effort to get it all done. Uh, thanks to the board for working this and making this happen. Thanks to the county manager for figuring out the numbers and being able to do that and seeing where we are. Uh, thanks to uh, Ms. Erica for being able to pull this together so that we can understand the numbers to be able to really uh, do that. Uh, today during the uh, uh, airport thing, uh, Stephanie, your name was mentioned a number of times on how well the uh, authority, joint authority was put together and all of that stuff. Thank uh, you. The commissioner was uh, most appreciative of how that pulled together and he could show that to different people to be able to say here it is. So thank you for that. Um, uh, lastly, I want to say again, us passing the pay thing tonight. Yeah. It's the one small step for man, one huge, you know, for mankind. It was, it is a huge, huge issue that we got done uh, prior to the budget time. All right. Uh, anything from you? Uh, just, just one thing. Um, at our next meeting, the airport authority will be asking that you appoint to the regional authority. The legislation sets out who that should be, which our two current citizen appointments. Um, it's a formality to reappoint them to the regional authority, and then our third appointment would be the county manager or designee. So just so y'all can be thinking of, of, of that, about that. I heard that or designee from him. Okay. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, we'll see. All right. All right. Anything from you? No. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. A second? Second. All right. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Aye. We're adjourned. Yeah. Come on, home.